See? Oh. I told Hello. you you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> oh. We have a special Bible teacher today, a, a guest teacher today. Um, Anne has to go off and do something. She never tells me anything. This mm -hmm. is our good friend, Miss Deborah. Hello. What are you going to be teaching on today, Miss Deborah? Well, something. <laughs> well, I should certainly hope so. The devil is destroyed. The devil is destroyed? Yes. It sounds like first page sitting, news to me. Sitting yesterday outside in my chair, and I um, had some thoughts that came to me that I want to reiterate. Right. That are very important for us as Christians. Okay. So, um, where do you want you, to start? You know, we walk a, a life of victory. Uh, yes. In the Lord Jesus Christ. But yes. We will never walk in victory until we know our enemy is defeated. Okay. As Christians, True. we don't move from defeat into victory. Let me be clear. We don't move from doubt into faith. The Word of God tells us that we move from faith to faith mm -hmm. in Romans 1, 17. Okay. We always start from a place of victory, Christ's victory. Did you Can you me? look up 1 Corinthians 15, okay, 57, you didn't, please? You didn't want me to read? No. Okay, and 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let me make sure I'm spelling it right, Miss Deborah. 15. For sure. 1557. Whoa, who would have known? Yes. Who would have known there were that many verses in 1 Corinthians? Well, I hope there is. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And there is. Thank As you. a matter of fact, this is the penultimate verse because there's 58. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we want victory, we start from a place of victory. Doubt, defeat, despair are not the kind of stuff where we can build a strong, victorious life. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, if we see ourselves as helpless and hopeless victims of the devil, we will never see ourselves as winners. That's true. That's that very is true. very true. Yes, that's Satan true. Satan doesn't Deborah. have the power to defeat us anymore. No. All God's sons and daughters have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. But listen to me. He does have the ability to deceive us. Yes. If we don't deceiver. understand who we are in Christ, he can deceive us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fear the devil, Branches. Amen. Because Amen. Jesus is the center of our lives. Amen. He is indeed. You know, I pray the Lord will give us a revelation of this from Scripture that we will never, never, never turn away. We a, a revelation that we've never seen before. And it always centers around who, Branches? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. The author and finisher you, of our faith. Can you read John 8, verse 32 and 36? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, right. you shall be free indeed. Amen. You know, I pray we would allow Holy Spirit to open our hearts to God's word, and we would hide it in our heart. That's what we have to do. That says um, in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. You're going to be looking up a lot of scripture Hebrew, today. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Yes. Thank you. Okay, let me get there, Miss Deborah. Let me get there. Hebrews 2. No, you're a lot more like my wife that way. She refers How to so? a lot of scriptures. Oh. Yeah. Well, the word is our life. It is indeed. Mm-hmm. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death right. 
he might destroy him who had the power, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject mm -hmm. to bondage. That's right. The devil is destroyed by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. That is absolutely true. The truth. Now, that doesn't mean the devil still doesn't exist. Believe me, he's still around. Oh, he's still prowling around like a lion. Yes, just turn on the news. Look around you today. My goodness. You know, the Greek word for destroy is kataargio. 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 Yes, and it means to make powerless, bring to naught, reduce to zero, make ineffective, make of no effect, paralyze. So Jesus not only paid for our sins, but he made the devil powerless. Reduced him to zero and Amen. paralyzed him. Amen. Ha! Yes, he did. Amen. Come on, branches. Let's sing hallelujah. 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 Ha, 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 ha. You're like your namesake. Yes. Yes, Deborah in the book of Judges. Mm hmm. Out there leading. Yes. Powerful. So we don't Praising have God. to fear the devil, man. No. no. Or the judgment after man? death. Can you read Hebrews 9, 27? Hebrews 9, 27? Yes. Wow. And then go to 10, 27. My goodness. I'm a bit bossy sometimes. I am yeah. a Deborah. Yes. You know, you are, uh, <laughs> you pretty well have to be in a leadership position, of, like being a judge in ancient Ju in Israel. You pretty well had to be fairly bossy. Um, Hebrews... Uh, Are you there yet? Nine. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You're like a little <laughs> kid sometimes. 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this to judgment. This is good. We quote this all the time. Branches, now I know where it is. He was 927. I'm going to have to remember that. Um, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. And then when we go 1027, it says, uh, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of right. judgment and fiery ind ind indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Right. We discussed this before in the prayer teachings, but... I'm going to say it again. Death lost its sting. Hallelujah. And death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Yes. Through the death of Jesus, mm -hmm. we were shown that we don't have to fear anything. Amen. Especially physical death. Amen. Hmm. Death cannot destroy the soul or the spirit of a man. When we get to the other side, We'll have a glorified body. Amen. Amen. That is the inheritance that is laid up for us in heaven for all who believe. The and how many of, of us? Life. How many of us can't wait for that? Put up your hand. Right. Can you look up First Corinthians fifteen fifty five and fifty seven? First Corinthians fifteen fifty five. Don't you love the Word of God? First Corinthians, back to First Corinthians 15, and we're going to start at 55. Oh, death. Oh, okay, we already quoted this. Oh, death. Yes, where we did. Where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? And 57, we'll read the whole thing. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus, resurrection was released, has released us from fear of the devil and death. The scepter of authority was stripped away from his hand. Amen. Jesus is now the rightful owner. Praise Jesus. Hey, praise God. I want to briefly discuss again what was 
on God's heart and mind when he created this earth and man. Now, bear with me, Branches. I know we've been over this before, but it really was on my heart. And I want to just speak what the Lord puts on my heart. And if it, she, he, if the Lord put this on your heart, then this must be important. Important for yes, us to it go is. over this again. Very important. Man was created for dominion. And we know this from Genesis 1, 26. And I'm just going to say scripture, but we may not look them all up. You can type them in, can't you? Yes, I can. Oh, Deborah, no thank problem. you. Thank you. And that, so people who are keeping score at home will be yes. able to follow. Well, type in Psalm 8, oh, 4 wow. to 6. I love that song. Do when, you? Do you want to read it? When I look at the works of your hands. Well, then read it for us, please. That would and be I good. wonder, what is man that you should notice him? Right, that you are mindful. And that you are of mindful us. of him. What is the son of man that you should care for him? Love that verse. Every time at night when I'm praying and I look up into the stars, and I'm always thinking this song, Psalm 8. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you... Well, actually, you should read the whole thing. When I consider your heaven as the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Yes. And you have put all things under his feet. Yes. We'll stop there. Yes. Verse 6. So, these scriptures show us that God had a plan for Adam and Eve. They had the right and responsibility to have all dominion over the creation. Amen. And for a time, they did. They ruled wisely and did a good job. There was divine peace mm -hmm. and there was order. <sighs> a blissful time. The blissful lambs time. played and laid down with the lions. Can you picture that? All the animals got along. Not like today when there's fear and, you know, like I look at the little rabbit and he's always looking around him, wondering who's going to come and eat him. Always in fear. Yes, that's true. Yes. And another thing, there were no thorns, no thistles or weeds anywhere. Can you imagine that? Perfection. Huh. Today, you know what, you know what? what, Deborah? Maybe we can't imagine that because of the the we have finite minds that have been corrupted by sin. Maybe we maybe we think we can picture that, but maybe we can't. Maybe mm. that's why when we do come, when we when we do come uh, through the portals of death, and we come to the uh, to the Lord and stand, and we see heaven at for what it is, we see the Lord for what it is. It's nothing like we could have imagined because we are incapable in right. this right. existence to manage. It's just a thought. Only what the Lord allows us to just get the little Lord, yes, tiny exactly. glimpses of it. That's right? what's so important about the Word of yes. God because that's the revelation of God. This is sure. what He wants us to know about Him. He gives us visions. Amen. I've Amen. seen visions. Amen. And I've also sat on a thorn. And I know it's not very nice. It's painful. Wow. I didn't know puppets had visions. I'm not a puppet. Use your imagination. I'm real. Ha. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, carry on. Um, no, you carry on. There were fruit trees everywhere and flowers everywhere. Amen. You know, it, it was very beautiful. I can imagine that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And there was no sin. No. It, the air must have been oh. bursting with fragrance. Oh, I have heard that, um, well, because it, it's from Genesis, there, it, right. it, it never rained. No, at, just at, the dew the came evening, up from the, the ground. The dew came up from the ground in the evening. A mist. Water, the, a mist, yes. Yes, I heard yes. that. Yes. The, the first rain that anybody ever saw was the first drops of the flood. Yes. But then what happened? Well, we all know what happened. But then is man lost dominion through disobedience and deception. Amen. Scriptures That's tell true. us that Satan had originally, what was my thought? What was my thought? Oh, originally been created as a beautiful and anointed cherub. Yes. Did you know that? Yes, I did know that. You did? I did know that. I'm familiar with. Or an and angel. I'm, and I'm sure that you're going to quote this either from Isaiah 14 or Ezekiel 28. 
Well, I think he was probably the head of the music department. Yes, yes, I think so too. Being you a know, musician, and, and he was head of worship. And he understood that very clearly the power yes. of music. He wanted to be like God and rule the world, but God gave him, gave Adam and Eve that authority. Right, you and I. Mm -hmm. So through pride and rebellion, he fell from heaven. Amen. We see that in Luke 18. Yes. Ma and like you said, Ezekiel 28, 11 to 17. Can you read that, please? Yes, yeah, those are... Thank you. These are uh, quite the scripture verses. And then Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. These... Um, they are. These uh, verses are some of the most striking verses in the Bible, not only in the Old Testament, but in the Bible itself. You want to understand, and I'm glad that yes, that Miss Deborah has brought this up because we want to understand the power and character of our adversary. This is one of the one of the places that mm -hmm. we should go to. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't know, Miss Miss Deborah, if you were watching our, our broadcast yesterday, but when Grandpa and Billy they went into the Book of Job again, same idea of the authority and the character and power that Satan actually has. Right. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, yes. the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, and onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Right. You are the anointed cherub who Beautiful. covers. I established what? you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till the iniquity was found in you. By the yes. abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, are, you corrupted your wisdom for the yes. sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground and I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Hmm. That's 17. But he, he, he goes on. Then, then he shows up in the Garden of Eden. As a beautiful serpent, he knew he couldn't force his way on them or overpower them, so he used what? His influence. Huh. That was the only power he had. All he could do was use deception and lies. So he comes to Eve in a very sly and subtle way. He planted seeds of doubt in her heart about God's love God's honesty mm -hmm. and authority. Yeah. What does she do? She believes him. Huh. That he was right and God was wrong. He's, he's, she. Uh, sorry, Mr. Wright, I didn't mean to. Are wrong. you really? I, I, I just wanted to say that <laughs> since you're talking about Satan deceiving Eve, I just want to remind the branches out there that he, he has never changed his tactics, ever. He's very unimaginative that way. So he uses true, the same son. tactic when he comes to you right. and I in the, in the night, in the midst of the night, in the midst of our doubt, and he asks us the same question. Has God, Has God really, really said? said? That's why it's important to stand uh, before God. Right. Sorry, Miss Deborah, carry on. It's okay. You're saying important things as well. She chose to eat of the tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life. Amen. She did, mm -hmm. but Adam was not deceived, but chose to follow Eve into her fallen state. Yes, he did. First Timothy 2, 14 talks about this. Well, can I you read that, that son? Sure, yes. I can. You don't mind if I call you son, do no, you? No, not at all. You okay. don't call me son. Because you're much younger than me. <laughs> it must feel nice to be told that for once. Oh, excuse me. Every time I every time I hear that, it makes me laugh. Okay, what's First Timothy two? You said no. Yes. 
Verse 14. I guess you don't want 1 Thessalonians 2. Right? No, no, no. 1 Timothy 2, 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Right. I'm backing everything up with scripture. You're like, my, so you're like my wife that way, Miss Miss yes. Deborah. She backs everything up yes. with scripture. So what was the result of that? Well, there were three things that happened. And let me tell you, they lost the right to rule mm -hmm. for one. Yep. And they came. Satan took the keys to the house. Under Satan's authority. Mm -hmm. And they, they believed. Believe me. He was very quick to snatch that scepter up too. And God planned to restore dominion. Ha! Yes, he has a plan. You see, Satan not only deceived others, but he came under deception himself. Yes. He really believed he won the victory over God and man. He was so deceived, but he didn't know that part of God's nature called grace was going to come in play. No, it's based on an unselfish love that seeks to redeem those things that were lost, no matter what the cost. And in our case, it would be the death of another man. Can I, can I say something? The here? son something, of man. Something you just said, the son of man. Yes, Lord Jesus the Christ. son of man. There's something you just said, and I'm starting right. to think, it reminded me, about how you said that God hides from Satan what he what he's doing and that's true part of it part of that is yes. true. no a lot of it is true yes. and, and I and I, I, but he I knew instantly some things. thought of a comparison or I think that there's a difference here there's a contrast here God hides from Satan so Satan doesn't know what Lord's the look God's plans are he can only guess at them he can only by the actions of obviously God since this time does not share since Satan's fall he is he doesn't share his plans or what he, what he plans on doing but it's interesting that he does with us and I tell you when she said that my first thought was Genesis chapter 18 when God appeared to Abraham under the oaks of memory and he was right. talking about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord says to himself shall I hide from Adam who's going to become this great nation everything that I am about to do no, I will tell him what I'm about to do. And then he shares. Adam, Adam or Abraham? Point. Sorry, Abraham. Did I say Adam? Yes. Sorry. Well, Thank that's you, Mr. Because Deborah. we're talking about yes, Adam. Yes, sorry. Abraham. That's okay. So, interesting contrast there. Yes. I just, I just wanted to point that out because you got me thinking about that. So, sorry, Miss Deborah. Carry on. So, the Son of Man. I'm sure Satan didn't think God would give up his own son for us. No. Yeah. Sure. Thankfully, he did. And even before man had been created. Huh. It's hard to wrap my head around that. If man didn't believe that God would give up his son, what makes you think that uh, Satan would? And again, going back to yeah. Abraham, that we have that's that, that example we have, Abraham taking Isaac up, but right. God ended up holding his Revelation hand. Revelation 13.8. Staying his hand. Revelation 13.8. Yes. To Can you back, please look that up? To the back of the book. You're doing a great job, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I get I get I get paid because I have a degree in business. <clears throat> yeah, right. Not really. I didn't think so. No, I have a degree in history, but I don't have a degree in business. Where about our father's business in this channel? Hmm. Yes. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth let's get the context of that oh this is the coming of the beast mm -hmm. but the dragon gave him power right then i stood and saw the sand on the sea and i saw a beast rising up out of the sea and then it goes through a number of verses where it talks about him until we get to verse eight this is talking about the beast and all who dwell on the earth when the beast comes will worship him the beast the beast whose names have not been written whose this is important whose yes. names have not been written in the lamb's book of life slain from the foundation of the world praise god branches that we have our names written in the lamb's book of yes life. amen and, and make sure your name stays and written. make sure it stays there there 
because David <laughs> even says that in, I think, Psalm 51, do not erase my name from the book. Right. Something similar to that. I mean, you see, God knew. He saw that man would sin and would need a savior. So Jesus was chosen for this purpose, you know. Amen. Before man was even created. Wow. Yes. That's it good. says you that in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 20. You sure 220. are wise, Miss Deborah. Well, I study to show myself approved. Amen. First so, Peter. Yes. No, no. One. One. 18 to 20. Now I'm going to show myself approved. Get with it with this Bible reading the scriptures. Scriptures. Are you Irish? Well, I thought it was, thought it was being a bit Scottish, but uh, I, it's probably in the troubles. Hmm. Uh, and if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Right. Stay here is talking about your lifetime. Again, another inference that we're just pilgrims. We're only here temporarily. What we read, what Miss Deborah read earlier about is ordained for man to live once in the judgment. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition from right. your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before <gasps> the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Right. God didn't change his plans when man fell. No. We are his beloved family. It was still his purpose to fill the whole earth with his sons and daughters Amen. that would look just like him in <laughs> all yeah. his beauty. And it's through our love and beauty that the whole earth would see the glory of God's kingdom. Amen. As the waters cover the, the sea. sea. Yes, through Jesus, the scepter would again return to the hand of his creation, man. Amen. And his plan of redemption was set in motion as soon as man fell. I think Satan knew all about it too. I think so. And I even think Adam and Eve heard it. However, scripture speaks directly to the serpent in Genesis 3, 14 and 15. You're on it, boy, right? Genesis 3. I called you boy. Yeah, not son anymore. Did you notice that? I'm a You're boy, boy now. <laughs> Genesis 3 what? You don't remember. No, I don't. 14 and 15. Thank you. The that, seed of the woman. That's that judge thing coming oh, out yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Poor Barack. Barack Obama? No. No. Barack, the general yes, who Deborah yes, forced yes, to fight. Yes. Anyway. I'm kidding. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Right. The seed of the woman is talking about the family line that Jesus would come from. Amen. Satan was told that he would strike at his Jesus heel, but the wound would not be fatal in any way. Hmm. It's not going to be a final thing, you know. That, I believe, is talking about Jesus' death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yes, right there. Amen. Death could not keep Jesus in the grave. You agree? I absolutely yes. agree because that's what scripture says. Death could not keep him in the grave. And not just right. in the New Testament, say it throughout the Psalms. Jesus. You will not see your anointed Jesus see would. corruption. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to back up with scripture. I thought that's why Jesus I would use his death to crush the serpent's head. The final blow, the fatal blow or wound, ha ha ha, Satan would not even recover. Nope. 
Not at all. The phrase crush your head says some, something else as well mm -hmm. when speaking of his, this authority. Mm -hmm. The term head includes the thought of headship mm -hmm. or governmental authority. Did you know that? Covering. I do now. Yes. Paul used this term as well in 1 Corinthians 11.3. And we're going to look there. It's very important. I assume so. Yes. Into 11.3. Uh, and if you guys out there have it before I do, read it out. <laughs> Funny. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of a woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Yes. So now our story of the garden is becoming more dramatical. God himself is telling the devil that someday, someday, the seed of the woman, Jesus, would wrench the scepter from the devil's hand by way of the cross. And take back what he just stole. Right. Man would be redeemed and Satan would be defeated. And man would be rightly restored back to God. So God's son, as the son of man, would regain for us who are redeemed the authority to govern what was lost. Amen. And you know what? what? The kingdom of heaven is going to rule the earth one day. Yes, through God's family, us his sons and daughters, and Jesus is firstborn of that glorious family. Amen. Our victory through him will last forever. Not, not only is he Hallelujah. the firstborn, but is he not the king of the kingdom? Of oh, yes. yes, 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 of course. And he will establish that kingdom when he returns again. That's what I'm saying, time. boy. There you go, call me boy. <laughs> this theme of restored righteousness Righteous government through God's royal seed can be traced all through Scripture. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's true. What did Paul say that's to the true. Galatian church? Galatians 4, 4 to 7. Am I reading that? Yes. Galatians 4. Paul is linking the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ to the seven. promised seed in Genesis 3. That's what he's doing. That he probably is. Mm -hmm. Even so, I'm going to start at one. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Verse three. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, sin sinful elements of the world established by the fall of in Eden. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Mm. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, through Christ. Yes. And Amen. Jesus is... That's an important piece of scripture right there. Yes. He came to earth, born of a woman. He came for the purpose of redeeming mankind. Amen. Amen. Ah, and restoring him to a place of authority in the family of God. Amen. So Jesus has fulfilled the prophecy given... The serpent in the Garden of Eden. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, and God's timing was impeccable. And Satan was dethroned. Yes. Dethroned. Now, you think Satan is going to go away quietly, br Branches? Oh, no. No, oh, no sirree, no. <laughs> I think you've all had first-hand experience with that. Oh, yes. So, he tries to avert the plan. That's what was happening in the temptations of Jesus in the desert. Yes. 
Yes, For sure. Very true. He tries to challenge to the source of Jesus' divine authority by questioning his divine sonship. Huh. He says, if you are the son of man, yeah. then he tempts Jesus. But it's the last one that really shows his challenge. Matthew 4, 8 to 11. It's interesting, I see, that we come under authority of the one we worship. Huh. True. It's so true. So be careful. Branches. 8 to 11. We're just going to go over the temptations. Again. Yes. The devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and oh, showed yes. him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall yes. you serve. And then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Right. And I do find it interesting. Well, it is. To he, see. He, he didn't stop there. Because it's interesting. No. Because later on in Christ's ministry, he, we think that, 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 this, that Satan didn't return to Jesus until the Garden of Gethsemane. But he spoke through one of his disciples. You may remember this. Mm -hmm. Where Simon Peter said to yes. Jesus that if... You, if what you say is true and you're going to Jerusalem and you are going to be crucified and you are going to be killed, it's up to us to keep you from going. Right. You can't go. You can't let this happen. What did Jesus say? Peter, you think Peter, as man you thinks. think as man thinks, not as God thinks. Right. And then what did he say? Get behind me. Get Satan. behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling Peter Satan, but what he was, he was speaking Satan to the spirit behind Peter that was making Peter, Peter say yes. what sounded good. It sounded right. like it was in this. And again, this is the deception of, of the enemy. It sounds true because yes. that's what he does. He mixes so, a bit of the truth with the lie. So, actually, what we worship becomes our authority, our God. True. What yes. Satan was Very really true. saying is, if you will come under my authority, I will give you rulership the over the all world. the kingdoms of the earth. Of course, She's has seen right through this deception. He's no fool. You it, know. It's a deception to a point. Remember, you just said, and rightly so, in the garden, the dominion of the well, earth of course. passed to Satan. I'm getting to that. God, oh. carry on. And believe me, Satan' offer was real because at the time he did have that authority right up until the cross. Right. Right. Listen. Right. If I were to say to you. I will give you $10 million if you will bow down and worship me. Now, most of you would laugh your head off. <laughs> right? Why, would why we, is that? Why? why would we laugh? Because you know I don't have that kind of money. Million, exactly. Right? Right. And I really don't. I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be a real temptation. Amen. Jesus' temptations were real they were real yes they were the devil was offering you know him a real thing here you know satan has a way to avoid the cross he he, he was offering jesus a way to avoid the cross jesus you don't have to go through all that pain just accept my offer but why, but did, why did, why, Miss Deborah, did he want Jesus to avoid He would him? have to disobey his Father in Heaven to do that. His temptations were so stressful, angels had to come to help him recover, not only with food, but they ministered to him personally. Can because I? at that point in time, Satan did have the authority over the earth. He took it from Adam and Eve. Satan knew this is why Jesus had to come. Since that time, back in the garden, Satan tried to destroy the royal seed, the bloodline. Oh, what were you gonna say? Well, I am just gonna make a suggestion that if Jesus, if Jesus had, had taken the offers that Christ, or that Satan was offering him, what essentially is Satan saying here? He's saying, 
Okay, I, as I understand it, yes, you're going to establish a kingdom on earth. You're going to establish your kingdom. I will give you, since I have dominion, I will give you that kingdom right now. You can have everything that you came here to do. But, and this is where I think it's really important for us to understand, but you leave the earthlings to me. You leave the people who are in bondage in sin to me. They have been living in my kingdom since they were born and they will die in my kingdom. You cannot have them. In other words, you cannot have us. But you can have everything else, Jesus. You can have the kingship. You can have the crown. You can eat. You can have all these things. Oh, I don't think he would allow Jesus to have the earthlings. And he probably no, would have deceived no, him at some no. point. But the thing is, the point was... He's out to destroy. This whole, to this kill, whole exercise to was Satan. Was behind everything Satan was saying was, you're going to leave the human beings. You're going to leave men to me. They're, they're going to be my subjects, not yours. And that's what Jesus came to be. He, he came to restore us to the Father, to make us subjects again to God. And that's why this is so important. So, he tries to destroy Jesus. Remember, he stirred up King Herod to, mm -hmm. kill, to kill all the infants under two years old. Yep. Only a demon-possessed man would do that. That's for sure. Something like that. That's what sure. was Satan after? To kill Jesus. Yes. He had such a hatred for him. He wanted to kill the seed of the woman. Satan knew that when Jesus became a man, there would be a battle for the power and authority that he had. Satan did not want to lose this dominion and authority. So, oh, I lost my train of thought. Did he leave hmm. the station? So when force didn't work, the devil tried to cause Jesus to sin the same way that he tempted Adam and Eve. He tried to get them away from the will and the word of his father. The will and word of his father, just as he does for us today. Amen. He was hoping that Jesus would act in his own self-interest. He was fully aware that Jesus was the seed of the woman and he knew Jesus had come to take away his right to rule. You understand that? Yes. Yes. You see. Sort of what I was saying. Though yes. Satan did not understand the cross. Totally missed it there, guys. Totally missed it. I think everyone. Uh, yeah. He, he missed this one. He knew his kingdom was threatened by Jesus. But I don't think he knew the method Jesus would use to overthrow him. Paul tells us that the rulers and princes of this world didn't understand what was happening. No, they didn't. No, in 1 Corinthians 2, 8. Let's look there, boy. You're still a boy. Corinthians 2, 8. This is also goes... Yes. 1 Corinthians... And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 4. We're not. Yes. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had for had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I think it's important. Right. To put seven this there. is talking about and I really believe that. It's talking about the devil and his ruling princes. Yes, it is. Earthly rulers are just agents who serve under demonic princes, right? These demonic princes and powers behind these earthly rulers weren't really aware of the powers and purpose of the cross. Right. Am I reading second grade? Yes. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, this is exactly who we're talking about, right. the adversary, the enemy, Satan. Not earthly rulers. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, 
should shine on them. Yes. These demonic princes and powers behind these earthly rulers weren't aware of the power and purpose of the cross, as I said. And Jesus was fully aware that he had to suffer first before entering mm -hmm. his glory. Yes. Can yes. you type in Luke 24, 26? And Revelation 13, 8. So Luke, Luke 24, 24, 26. 26 and Revelation 13, 8. We just, we already read that. Yes. Okay, I'll just, just remind everybody, in. but I'll just type it in. Okay, we're not right. going to 24, 26. No. Okay. So Calvary and the cross must come first before the kingdom and the crown. Amen. Yes. It must have been Jesus's temptations. Wait, no. No, no, no. I lost my train of thought. It must have That's been very tempting man. for Jesus to rule and reign, you know, over the world without pain and suffering of the cross mm -hmm. when Satan offered it. But praise God, branches. Oh, praise God. Yes, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. Amen. Yes, Lord. We oh, do. hallelujah. We praise, Lord. We we praise you, God he endured that to the, the end. Cross, you learned obedience Just the as Lord, we you. can because of Christ's victory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, praise your holy name. Well, son, let me look at my watch. Wait, I forgot my watch. What time is it, lad? What well, time is it, boy? 12.30 our time. Okay. Well, I have another appointment. I have to meet with the oh. mayor. The mayor? The mayor himself. Oh, oh, oh. Well, then, we are certainly thankful and grateful that you could spare your yes. important time to come in and share the word of God with the branches here. You're um, welcome. So, that, that I love was... you all. And thank you for having me as your guest. We boy. will definitely, if you're, just call me boy. Again. Yes. If if you are willing, we would love to have you come back and and uh, and, and do some other teaching for well, us. Well, I do have was, more I want to share on this subject. Well, I would because God has been really telling me a lot, okay. and I've been studying it a lot. Well, when you are ready to present it, will you come back? Oh yes. Oh, awesome. I'd maybe tomorrow. You. I'm in town for a week. Oh. All right, well, maybe tomorrow. Maybe we'll finish this tomorrow. We'll see how the Lord leads. Yes. Amen. So. Yes, we'll pray about it, boy. Yes, we'll pray. Son. That's better. Son. Mr. Peel. Sons. <laughs> we are sons and heirs. Didn't we just read that, Miss Deborah? That yes. we're sons and heirs? Well, I have to run. All right. So have a blessed day, Branches. I've been very honored to teach today. And we have been honored to have you, Miss Deborah. Thank you so much. Can we pray quickly before yes, you go? Yes, go on. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for this time together to look into your word, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that for all the information in your word, Lord, the revelation that you have given to us, Lord, that, that we might be mindful, Lord, of the, of the snares and the works of the enemy, Lord, that we might have discernment, yes. Lord, to know, to, as John says, yes, to Lord. test every spirit to see whether they be of God, Lord. We thank you that you remind us, Father God, that we do, we walk on a narrow way, Lord God, and that we mean to strive to stay yes. on the narrow way that leads to eternal life, yes, Lord, Lord God. And I Help know that's the Lord. desire of everyone who's listening temptation. to this channel, Lord God. Father, I pray yes, that you Lord. will bless Miss Deborah, Lord, and all the works of her hands, Lord, Lord, and everything that she does, Lord, for you. And she is being about her father's business. Pray, Lord, that she will thank be able you, to Lord. share the gospel with the mayor that she when she goes to meet him this afternoon, Lord. And Father, we thank you for all the branches who joined us today, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that your spirit yes. has been here amongst us, leading and guiding us, teaching us. For you, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, Lord. Yes. And he leads us into all truth, Lord. And in, when we are in truth and we are in the spirit, Father, then we can worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, we thank you, O oh Lord God, for this time together. And until tomorrow, I pray yes, that Lord. you will hold everyone into the palm of your hands. Lord, you protect everyone. Set your hedge of protection around each and every person, Lord, and provide for every need in every household, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us today, Branches. You might see Miss Deborah tomorrow, or you might see her at some point later on. 
But I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you got as much out of it as I did. I always get, whenever we look into the Word of God, I always get so much out of it. So. Oh, yes. Okay. So, thank you again. Toodle-doo. Bye, everyone.